The following show features episodic breakdowns of Jackass, either performed by professionals or under the supervision of professionals. For your safety, avoid listening to this podcast at all times. Hi, I'm Mikey Aaronworth. I'm Jason Wellwood. And I'm Chris Aaronworth. Welcome to Jackass. Welcome to Jackass. It's the podcast where we review every single episode of one of our favorite TV shows of all time. It is the episodic breakdown, stunt by stunt, of one of the greatest instances of television movie history ever. Am I bigging it up enough for you, Chris? Jackass as, as an Absolutely entity? Absolutely not. No, no, Absolutely it's still not. Everything to do with Jackass. We are doing Wild Boys today, just in case you... Uh Watch the wrong episode or something. That's true. It's Wild Boys episode five, actually a little bit out of order because uh, normally we go back and forth between Wild Boys and Viva La Bam. We had some issues with the episode of Viva La Bam. Turns out Viva La Bam, a very hard series to get your hands on, uh, yeah. even if you're trying to do it the right way. It's very hard to purchase anywhere. Speaking of that, if any of the fans over there might happen to know a link, wink, wink, nudge, nudge, <laughs> and can email me or get me in touch with that because I have no problem buying, renting. I cannot find this episode anywhere. The other ones, no problem. I've tried VPNs and paying for it outside of the place, but outside of my country, literally can't find it anywhere. It's driving me nuts. So, yeah, we might be able to get a little bit of help. Well, Chris, I was I was going to say, uh, my name is Mikey Aaronworth. Today I'm hosting. Jay is not joining us uh, this week as mm-hmm. well. He is on vacation, but he will likely be back next week. Um, uh, unless this episode is released out of order. Who knows? We're living uh, on the seat of our pants right now. Chris, my brother, Chris Aaronworth, is also there, and he has the fact of the day. Chris, why don't you let us know when this episode came out and something special that happened on that day? Ooh, there was something special. This was this episode came out on November twenty third, two thousand and three. Mm-hmm. You know what happened? I figured since it's a nature show, we got to do nature theme fact of the day. Okay, and and one of nature's most unique, cool instances happened this day. Okay, what do you think that might be, Mikey? What's really cool that nature does? November twenty third, two thousand three. Yeah, something. I don't think that's going to help you. So I, I'm going to say like a like an eclipse, like a solar eclipse oh, or wow. something. That's exactly what it yeah. was. A All total right. solar eclipse took place uh, with the magnitude of one zero three seven nine. I have no idea. What I don't that know means. what that means. That sounds like an earthquake measurement. But in case you didn't know, a solar eclipse occurs when the moon passes between the Earth and the Sun, thereby totally or partly obscuring the image of the Sun for the viewer on Earth. Oh, yeah. There you go. But you're still not supposed to look directly at it, right? That's that's a big I thing. I think that's why I have one time when I was a kid, I remember this like, don't look up. And they gave us these black like sheets. Yes. Like, you couldn't see through it. And I was at it was in like grade two or three. There's a big eclipse. We all went outside to look at it. And I just like, like was looking with the sheet on and I just removed the sheet before I looked <laughs> down. And I'm like, I swear I've never had good vision since then. So maybe yeah. that had something to do with it. It could be. It could be. Well, you know what? Look, it's a it's a big world out there, but we're already uh, double dipping and heading back to the land of Kudu Dudu. We're going to South Africa. Uh, a throwback to the first episode of Wild Boys. We're only five episodes in. We're already double dipping on the countries. But look, there's a lot that goes on in South Africa. And I loved everything about the last time they went. So why not go back to a place with animals that are constantly looking to kill them? Obviously, Australia, the last time we did it is, is also pretty insane but we start off in shark alley and there's a blow-up doll of steve-o now chris i have a question for you because you're a you're a, a bit of a nature fanatic what do they always say about sharks whenever someone says they're afraid of them what do they always say about that yeah what's oh what? shark, sharks they're, they, you know they don't really hurt people okay they're nice so, they, they just want to do a little test bite yeah oh, just a little test bite yeah by a giant <laughs> animal that no no issues whatsoever so why is it that a human shaped object with no meat on its bones in the form of steve-o because they they throw a blow-up doll of with steve-o's face they draw his tattoo on his back uh they make it look as much like him as possible they even give him a little yeah dude thumbs up uh they throw him in there and he is in the water for what five minutes before a shark just I'm completely annihilated. annihilates him what so, so i when, mean when when everyone's talking about how nice sharks are and don't be afraid of sharks there's nothing about that object in the water that should tell a shark it would want to eat it and yet it does well i mean the difference is that is shark alley no one says go swimming in shark alley don't drag behind a boat don't go water skiing in shark alley yeah they those that's the only place where the sharks do that ambush prey from when they're looking at things swimming across the surface and they come from the bottom i don't think that would really happen anywhere else um they probably chum the water too they probably did a bunch of things to get them going i wonder i wonder whether or not they've done a stunt where they go water skiing in shark alley that would be fucking terrifying not in Shark Alley, but in the uh, the the this week Shark Week Jackass episode, 
they did water ski like in shark infested water. Oh god, that's fucking and that's, terrifying. And that's when uh, that new guy, uh, fuck, what the hell's his name? Uh, Poopies. That's when Poopies <laughs> got his hand bitten. Oh Jesus! He did, he did a jump on a ramp over over this like pool of sharks. They were like swimming in circles, scared the shit out of him. One of them bit him. Oh my god! I mean, it's terrifying. You see the shark underwater, and all I can think is like, why do they have to be so big and so fucking mean? Uh, Chris Pontius though, pretty happy because he doesn't have to share the spotlight with Steve-O anymore. Uh, and and then we're taken right to Chris Pontius looking at an Apollo with a screwy horn that they claim is a product of incest, and maybe it is. Who knows? I, like, would an Apollo know if it's sleeping with a family member? I doubt it. I think they would. Oh, okay. And they would do it anyway? Yeah, I think they would. Yeah? Okay. Yeah. But- I Impala's mean, got to get the nut off, man. That's that's true. I, I would I would hope there's there's just so many Impalas. Like, don't stick with the family. There's there are are by nature by design there are thousands and thousands and thousands. Well, if, if you go by what Pornhub, the things that are always on fucking Pornhub for some reason, people like stepsisters or stepbrothers for some reason or stepmothers. So maybe they're just going around that range. Well, Chris, do you like brothers? Because that would be no. like you and me a little bit. No, no, that's disgusting. Okay, well. To each their own, I guess. <laughs> well, we go from the deadliest predator in the sea to the deadliest predator of the swamp. It's the Nile crocodile. Holy shit, this thing is fucking huge, eh? I can't believe how big it was and how close they were to it. it that was so gnarly. It's crazy, but they always say like with with crocodiles, it's like if it's chasing you, go serpentine, right? Like to to outrun it or whatever. There's no yeah. fucking way that thing could catch me. There's no way that thing could catch Dude, me. Do you know how fast they are? I don't care what you say. That thing is enormous. It's too low to the ground. I'm fast as fuck. There's not a chance that I thing's bet a bear, catching me. I bet a big ass grizzly bear couldn't catch you then either. I bet they? it. No, I bet a grizzly bear could. I've seen them move, but they've got they've got paws. They could stand up straight. Alligators just look like they're in pain all the time. <sighs> yeah, they kind of like look like they. Ooh, sorry about that. What a little boring you, Chris. Little Chris. <laughs> yeah, it's a little early there for me. You know, I'm recording at 11 p.m. <laughs> 11 11 a.m. 11:30. 11:30 a.m. Um, <laughs> I just lost my train of thought, but oh yeah, like they, they, don't, they seem like they're so big and powerful that they don't even give a fuck to chase you. They're just like, I'm going to just be like, it's like, it's like the big fat person that just like you get near them and they just like swat their arm like, get yeah, away. This, you know, anim- like, this animal's like the Don Vito of the animal kingdom. Like they're poking it and prodding it. And you're like, what is it? Get away from me. <laughs> it's crazy though how powerful this thing is i don't know what their plan is but pontius goes behind the the crocodile uh to to grab it so that steve-o can continue to analyze it without worrying about it it chomping his face off i guess pontius can barely hold on it just drags him into the water and that's where i agree with you it's like this thing is so much more powerful that it just can't be bothered by these two numbskulls uh, what do you think their skin feels like is it like it's like dinosaur skin like it's steel <laughs> or rock chris what do you mean what do you ex- well, like, hang on dinosaur skins it's uh-huh. obviously like you look like ankylosaurus and shit like that uh-huh. it's it's not skin it's rock okay or it's, steel this is, or something so like that's that. what you just said and that's where i think we need to take a break because absolutely it's not steel 100 percent. not steel but it, okay it's rock it, okay chris also <laughs> it's made animal rock. can't like, have rock as a skin I can. It Di- yeah. They're fucking dinosaurs. Chris, they've <laughs> existed before we lived. Like, what do you think they do? They were, they were the toughest nails. So do you think that the rocks that you step on are like bits and pieces from old animal armor? Oh, my God. No, don't think that. that Chris, might, don't that say might, that. What are, are that you- might be the answer. How do you know? Did you ever touch a dinosaur? I I've seen pictures of dinosaurs. Actually, and they have like rocks for skin. A lot of them have feathers, Especially too. Especially ankylosauruses. It's bone. Some real dinosaurs. It's, it's bone and callus. And old ass birds. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely not going to have. S- yes. Yes. Bone and cow. That's basically rock. It's that's, not skin. Chris, rock is it. I can't believe. I can't believe I'm doing this right now. I can't believe this is a conversation that we're having. It's absolutely Letter. not bone. Those are two you know very different fucking, things. You just said bone. It's, it's absolutely not stone is what I meant to say. Obviously. Look, you're making me stupider the longer we do this. We can't. We can't. Do, okay. I, I'm not a scientist, and I don't need to be to know that there is no stone on a dinosaur. That's not how bodies work. That's not how biology work. I can't believe. You know what? I'm not saying another word. I can't believe you're making me do this right now. Um, let's move on. Let's move on. Like this alligator or crocodile but tried to move on. Do you? Do you? So, but crocodiles' stone skin is basically pretty close to uh, 
dinosaurs. It would be close like, to you, dinosaurs, but not stone. It would be scales, and it would be hard, but it's not going to be stone, because it, it, that's impossible, Chris. And it's not impossible. Oh, God. Anything's possible. What is this, Adidas? Um, Anything's possible. There's, like, fucking, there's, like, worms. They move around. They eat without a mouth. Yeah, but Why not. Why can't an animal be made out of stone <laughs> or steel? Steel? Oh, my God, Chris. Okay. There's a whole group of steel Pokemon, Mikey. So there could be dinosaurs. <laughs> there's also ghost right? Pokemon, actually. Steel. You probably do believe in ghosts, too. So. Yeah. Um, okay, let's move on. Let's let's move on. So, look, you, you say nothing's impossible. And if I told Steve-O uh, he couldn't make out with a giraffe, uh, he would find a way to do it. And, look, it's the return of your favorite, Stilts. No pants this time. No camo I pants know, I was along really with the Stilts. Down. But the concept of someone chilling with a giraffe on Stilts. The giraffe must have been like so stoked, like oh, so oh, excited! Oh, I see what you're doing, bro. So wow, excited! You're finally, are you finally face level with me? This is really cool. Yeah, and it, it's going in for that bread. The whole goal of this is Steve O's going to feed a giraffe some bread, and in the meantime, try to get it to slip him a little tongue, uh, which he succeeds at. This is peak wild boys. This is so silly. Uh, pretending to be scientific, like going about a stunt. I don't even care that there's no risk of injury in this, although there, there probably is if the giraffe starts to lose its mind. Because um, you know giraffes, how they fight, eh? Yeah, they like stomp the shit out of shit. Not stomp, they whack everything with their head. Oh, they do that too. Which is but crazy. They're so ch- they're, they're, but the thing is, they're so chill. That, that, that like only happens in like mating with other giraffes. Like, do you ever hear that Joe Rogan bit when he's talking about how like, like he doesn't believe in zoos, but like, giraffes actually like are the happiest animals at zoo they just do their shit without predators yeah. they fucking have the biggest cages they just all they want to do is eat and like how they're so friendly they're the only animal wild animal that you could like <laughs> let kids fucking hand feed it's like you can't do that with any other fucking animal true giraffes true well they're they're herbivores right they only they only eat uh leaves yeah yeah so that's that's okay they're probably not going to chomp off a kid's hand do they even have teeth i, mean, I don't know maybe stone in their mouth according to you i, I don't know what, what we'd have there this was funny though man i liked it you, you got pontius coming in there to take a picture of the giraffe's wang and analyzing it which is just like <laughs> part of this was very funny and the other part was just uncomfortable like it's legit bestiality and i guess we're just cool with it um because steve-o can get away with whatever he wants um speaking of uh, uh uh putting things in animals in the form of bestiality we've got someone putting their hands in a black mamba waking up jp the prop man who wakes up just before a double black mamba slaps him right in the face uh this just every time i see it looks like the most miserable way to wake up um not quite as good as last week's episode when when pontius got an absolute rocking by the mamba uh but uh we'll move quickly on just like the animal in the next bit to the cheetah chris where do cheetahs rank in your uh, uh, overall love of animals. A lot of people love cheetahs. Are you a cheetah guy? I don't really care for them that much. Really? Why is that? They're like pussycats. And like, I don't mean like pussycats at home. Like they're pussies that are big cats. Like, they're just like, <laughs> <laughs> they're like, they're not, people think they're dangerous. They're like, they're just like, they're just fast. That's all they got going for them. Like they can't even like, like I was watching this documentary on them and like almost every single time they go for a kill that they don't do it, they almost die. Like they put so much effort oh. into it every time. They're just not like efficient animals. Like they they are in terms of like their ability to run that fast, the way their joints moves, the way their heart actually they have an expanding thing so their heart could expand to run at like high levels and That's at crazy. really quick paces and shit like that. They have some cool stuff like that, but I mean they're no fucking lion. They're no fucking uh So when you're in, in in uh, in in Ollie Frazier or Ollie Foreman, you're you're a Foreman guy, not an Ollie guy, eh? You like, There's you no like, way you could compare a fucking dumbass cheetah to a fucking Ollie. <laughs> no, I just I like the tactician, the the going in that the 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 death of a thousand cuts as opposed to the one big haymaker. That's always been the the boxer I've been a fan of, and I like cheetahs for that reason. But they the, are, that's the thing: the cheetahs are one big haymaker. Well, but they they have to be. To, everything has to work in harmony. It's always almost like poetry when they hunt. Right. Like like you you like a lion because they're enormous and big and hulking. I like the fact that it's quick and swift and in and out and and it's everything's a risk. It's like it's like a glass cannon sort of thing, which I've always been a fan of. Um, Okay, they dare. (laughs) Okay, so it's it's amazing, though. They're they try to go in a little like foot sprint with the cheetah and just fail immediately. And the cheetah is barely even trying. And then off camera, someone gets attacked. Mark, the cameraman gets a swipe and this this uh animal that you're not very afraid of or not very impressed by chris uh almost takes his nuts off which is terrifying and gets a pretty deep gash as well here's the thing 
Do you know that phrase, don't corner a caged animal? Uh -huh. They literally cornered a caged animal. They literally did. Also, yeah. they did the worst thing you could do to apparently a dangerous animal, and he got a little boo-boo on his fucking arm. Like, fuck <laughs> off. That's the best that thing could fucking do? Come on. If that was a lion, the guy would have been fucking dead by one swoop. Oh man, I uh, I don't I don't like this track that you're going on. I think I think the the cheetah family deserves a little bit more respect than you're willing to give them. Uh, but instead of of this rivalry between the lions and the cheetahs, like you're talking about here, we continue our rivalry between Big Birds and Chris Pontius. Uh, he's introducing this next sketch as an ostrich pecks at him, and then we find out something that I didn't know. I'm not sure if you knew no. this, Chris, but you can ride a fucking ostrich like it's a chocobo yeah, from have Final you ever Fantasy. Donkey Kong Country. Yeah, but also you're a donkey. Or you're a donkey. You're a, a monkey in Donkey Kong Country. You can also ride a swordfish, and I'm assuming that most gorillas don't do that either. I bet you. I bet you Manny fucking rode a swordfish at one point in his life. Chris, of course Manny rode a swordfish, but that's Manny. That's not. That's not a. a you don't think Manny used to, like he, he he rode like hammerhead sharks? Like that's how he got famous in the first place. Wait, what? Yeah, man. He was like he would just fucking hold on to their hammers like and like fucking ride them I, okay I, hang, I, on, hang, on, hang on 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 chris what did he hold on to their hammers chris what, <laughs> Wait, what okay. why do you think its head you, is shaped like that what do you mean well do you i just listen you say that a dinosaur has stone <laughs> on it and now when you say manny's holding on to the shark's hammers in my mind, you're assuming that they have that so they can hit things with it. No, no, no. Oh, okay. Thank I'm God. I'm not playing into that one. Okay. I am the fucking scientist, the shark. You know, I'll play into a different, like, the dinosaur thing, I'm dead serious. But <laughs> but the uh, the hammerhead sharks, no, that's, I don't, it, it's a pretty stupid design. It's like, they're yeah, the only sharks is. that aren't scary because you can just push them away. It's absurd. They Their mouth so is underneath. Yeah. But yeah, no, I, don't you remember we were in an airport somewhere and they had, like, the USA like outdoor channel on there. And we saw a guy riding hammerhead sharks. That was Manny before. Oh, wow. I knew him from Jackass. But anyways, oh, Jesus. I didn't know that. I dug your ass. No, I, I, I like that story. I didn't know that he could ride hammerhead sharks a la Donkey Kong on a uh, swordfish uh, or a marlin or whatever those things are. Uh, it's funny because they chase these, these, uh, or they, they, they race these ostriches around and it looks very perilous. It looks exciting as all hell. And it's funny because you can tell that they're weirdly competitive about the race. Like every time it's Steve-O versus Pontius, no one wants to admit it, but they take the competition really seriously. Steve-O wins by a mile in this ostrich, ostrich race and Pontius pulls a like, oh, I fell off the ostrich. I couldn't have won even if I tried that sort of thing. And they kind of like like Steve-O is very proud of himself and Pontius is just kind of like, oh, OK, let's get to the next thing, whatever. Do you exactly. notice that? Do you notice that rivalry yeah, between them? That's funny. It's so I, funny. It's friends. I, I guess you, friends you, do that. You, you, hundred um, uh, percent. What friends don't do is ask other friends to check electric fences for them. Chris Pontius checking the fence that borders the wildlife reserve that they're on uh, grabs the electric fence, which is crazy to me because as he says, after he grabs it, that's meant for rhinoceros, not him. Uh, and, and he somehow survives it. But speaking of a rhinoceros, we, uh, we, we find out that the white rhino shits huge, which I'm assuming you would have predicted if I told you yeah. that they did. Um, Remind me of Jurassic Park. Oh man, that's a huge pile of shit. What was that? Was that line by uh, 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 Jeff Goldblum in that? I haven't seen it in a while, but I just remember that it really stuck with me for all these years. Yeah, I love that one. Um, uh, basically, this one's kind of a nothing thing as well. I thought we were going to get a, a stunt similar to the kudu doo doo where they were spitting it around. They were talking about, I thought they'd be talking about an actual sport that's played in the outback, the outback, I don't know, the the, the safari wilderness, the what, the plains. Um, instead, they just get a, a femur or something of a giraffe and a big thing of rhino shit and swing at it and it uh, kind of explodes. They call it safari baby. Baseball. I call it a little bit of a waste of time as we move into the Zulu tribe, the Zulu group of of, of, Zulu of warriors. warriors. Yeah, which is yeah. this was an exciting one to me because the Zulus are are storied. Uh, their 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 history is pretty intense, known across the the world and across history as some of the most uh, successful warriors that that have ever I guess graced our history books. Do you know much about them, Chris? I feel like you do. I don't know, I feel, I don't know much. I know. I wouldn't say like I know the history, but I do know they were like a very powerful tribe. Um, they were one of the best warrior tribes around there. I, it's pretty much them and the, the the Maasai warriors are like the two that I think most people know without knowing anything about the different 
warrior tribes of Africa. Yeah. Um, it's like those are the big two. Yeah, That's- it was they 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 basically beat the British army in a war, the Anglo Zulu really? war. No, seriously. And uh, Holy shit. It, yeah, it's it's there. There's like a movie and a history about it. It's what they did is is incredibly impressive. Um, and and that's I think you know one of the reasons why they're so storied for for their 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 combat and and their warrior tradition. This you know I always say on on Wild Boys that it feels like every time they get uh, in tight with an indigenous group or a tribe or something like that, they kind of take advantage and they just kind of get silly. I actually didn't find that in this one i found that they actually no. this one was kind of interesting it was neat and it I, looked like they were doing things that was like quit pro quo it's like you guys show us something cool and we'll show you something cool especially steve-o 100 percent. steve-o was definitely stole the show on this one like you guarantee like a lot of those like top warriors by the end of it were like man that steve-o guy's pretty fucking cool like doing the knife balancing yes. trick where you've done this knife thing and the and then just how enthusiastic and how accurate his dancing was in the ceremonies like yes. his movements it just it seemed like he fit right in and he was pretty impressive showing them the skateboard trick yeah um i i i thought it was just a pretty cool one all around and, and he fit right in this is actually one of my favorite ones of the whole episode i agree it was it was great uh we meet chonko the zulu chief uh steve-o does a few things to show off like you said the skateboard the backflip it's all his parlor tricks it's all his like his like circus stunts and all that but it it kind of fits in with the show-off nature of of the dances that that the the zulu warriors are doing and uh they're dubbed chris and steve are dubbed the two white young warriors and uh and goddamn if that doesn't or Steve-O getting a tattoo uh, depicting him as the the white young warrior. I don't know what would. That would be a, a pretty cool nomaker to receive from them, to be well, honest. I, I even like how, like, the, the guys, oh, yeah, we're the white Zulus or something. And then the uh, the Chiefs, like, no, white Zulu warriors. Like, yes. He, he emphasize the warriors. Like, they were trying not to, like, disrespect them by claim be the warrior but yes. he really donned them with that moniker so it was pretty cool it was cool it was cool it seemed like there was a mutual respect there which i, I think that they don't often do well in in those sketches but uh we move there to another little interstitial it's the clip springer the cheese puff of the safari who takes off into the woods and uh we, we see pawnee is holding off a, a foot and he says hey he left his foot here that kind of made me chuckle obviously not its own foot uh and then we go to one of my favorite i'd say stunts of of this one this first of all this episode you know we talked about australia and how it was kind of disappointing for what australia could be i like that they revisited south africa because it made me think okay they're definitely going to go back to australia at some point but this episode had so many moments that were informative to my love of wild boys i I, you know like the scorpion one i remember so well there's a one later on that i remember so well everything feels like this is almost the episode where they find their voice Um, that's so funny you say that this was like like my least favorite episode i i I, like i have like basically no notes there was nothing i could really find really like everything was rapid fire like everything felt like the cheese puff thing it was like okay cool let's move on yeah I, i have which nothing is, really happened. Nothing really happened. Nothing really happened in a lot of my notes. It's funny that <clears throat> you wait. Hang on. Do you write that, that down? You write nothing really happened in your notes. Yeah. Are I'm you saying. serious? <laughs> you don't, just don't write anything. What are you talking about? Why well, you, I, I, okay. So Chris is showing me his phone. No, it's not. Oh, a, it's just a white. It just says on my Impala. End. Not much. Not much. <laughs> Cheese puff. Not much. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> That's true, Zap. <laughs> oh, so you wrote down the sound that offense makes. Okay, Just that, so I remember what happened. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, this one, you're right. I didn't write down too much. Steve-O basically just gets stung by a scorpion on his butt all the time. It's the African Emperor Scorpion. We're brought in and introduced to these things by being told that they're potentially lethal. But like, Steve-O gets stung a bunch by it and he's well, totally fine. What? So are they not lethal? We've been told our whole lives, like, check your boots for scorpions if you're in Australia and how dangerous scorpions are, but like, are they poisonous or are they not? Can someone answer that fucking question for me? Or is it just like they hurt and they could irritate you? Same, or does it depend on the thing. scorpion? Cause like, this is the fucking most bad at the emperor. The, the African emperor scorpion is always like known as like the most scary, badass scorpion. He got yeah. stung like nine times. So like, can yeah, someone fucking explain for real. Are they poisonous? Do we have to worry about them? I also hear, I hear this change all the time with like snake venom and especially black widows. Like I was taught that you get stung by a black widow, you're dead in two hours. And then you hear it's like, well, no, you'll get sick. Like you're not going to die. And then other times I'll hear it again where it's like, no, you'll fucking die. Like, I don't know how poison works. How does poison work? And I'm not going to ask you, Chris, because you're going to say something like fucking uh, uh, they put cyanide in it, as in like the scorpions brew up poison and put it in them. Uh, no, there's then- actually two different types of poisons. There's neurotype poisons and there's mu- and uh, fuck. 
damn it, I wish I kind of came through with this hard facts after you're dissing me. <laughs> Basically, one of oh, and ne- necrophilia or necrotype poisons. Necrophilia, okay. Well, yeah. not necrophilia, but I'm sorry, my mind was somewhere else. <laughs> but um, yeah, what one of the poisons basically shuts down your your near like uh <coughs> like your um your brain fu- function. Yeah, your like brain your function, and your it starts your nerves it starts misfiring shit, and like the other one is it basically rots your flesh from the inside out. Oof, those ones are gnarly. So either way, it's like both of them like one shut down your nervous system. That's the word I was looking for. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Um, both, both of those are awful. super fucking deadly. So yeah. when people say you get bit by a snake, you're 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 dead. Like I don't know what the hell this shit with these scorpions are. Scorpions <laughs> don't freak me out, man. I don't know. They've never freaked me out. They look. So fucking cool. cool How is right? there a thing that looks that goddamn cool? Like every so often nature is just like, hey, what about a praying mantis? And you're like, that thing fucks. I know that that thing fucks. And I know For that then sure. it eats the head of the eats thing the that head. it fucks. Why wouldn't uh, it? Scorpions are just like, hey, do you want a uh, uh, a little insect to basically be a tank? Like, it, it'd nature- be like if you ask like a kid like to create yeah. the coolest animal. <laughs> They give them claws. Okay. Yeah. yeah and yeah. they give them a tail. Okay. And then the tail could stab people. Exactly. Okay. And, and give it's them black armored as the skin. Night. And it's, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's the coolest fucking thing ever. It's so cool. Uh, uh, cooler than the, the, the sum of the parts of this stunt. It's fine. Uh, we'll move on, though, to what I would have assumed Steve-O would become, a dead carcass. Uh, but this one's a wildebeest, and the wild boys are playing with it. They're wiping blood on their face, and then they just start vomiting a whole bunch. Chris, you've got a bad gag reflex. Did this one uh, get you at all? Yes, definitely. It did. So When, when he said poopy and blood. Poopy and together. blood and the stink. And the, the stink, yeah. I just started visualizing that. I definitely gagged watching that. You know what's funny? Also, the sounds that they were making were outrageous. They were like very guttural uh, uh, vomit sounds. Like the, the, when, the, when I see Pontius puking, yeah, like you, first, yes. like that that shows me. Then it's he, like he's you don't really see, like Steve-O, You're just like yeah, he'll puke over anything. It's kind of his shtick. Knowing that Pontius was puking definitely made me really visualize how bad it actually was. You know what the thing was for me is that, yeah, he pukes first and it's it's the f- emphasis on the smell of pee that got because I I've smelled bad like cat pee is a bad smell. But when it's so bad that you're vomiting over the fact that you're smelling blood, shit, rot, but pee is the thing that stand out that stands yeah. out. That was so visceral to me. It's like, it, oh. Oh, did I just see your throat go a little bit? No, no. no oh, no. damn! I thought you were. Oh man, I I, I thought we were going to no. get you on this one a little bit, but uh, but no, you're uh, you, you're too no. tired to vomit. I'm I too guess. tired to vomit. Exactly. Okay, good. <laughs> Why don't you yawn into that microphone? Because if you're if you're falling asleep, maybe the listeners too. Uh, oh, you we guys move- keep fucking waking me up early to do these recordings. <laughs> This this was interesting, though, because the lion comes to see the, the carcass and Steve-O does something that you and I, Chris, when we were on a safari, they told us not to notes. do. I was going to ask you that question. What is the number one rule? The only thing they really, really emphasize. And and why don't you tell us and, and tell us uh, what this taught you? Don't stand up. Mm-hmm. Keep yourself and, in the vehicle. For whatever reason, I guess they're so used to seeing vehicles. They, they say they assume you are the part of the vehicle, which I still don't believe. But they say if you stand up and you break the shape, that's when the fucking animals go nuts. And that's exactly that's what exactly happened what when happened. popped up. Yeah. I couldn't believe that. When we were on our safari, we're like in front, like a few feet away from giant lions. Like they were literally within a leap away of killing us. And one is looking me dead in the fucking eye. Yeah. And I was like, he he doesn't think I'm part of this truck. He's staring at my soul right now. <laughs> but apparently they just, it, you know, we got away. They don't really fuck around. But like you could tell within literally a second, at least two of us would be dead. It's crazy. Steve-O it's stands so up and immediately, man. and this didn't feel like something that they were waiting for a good shot of. It's like yeah. he just stood up and immediately the line was like, get the fuck back down. And he's like, I will get that. out of your territory. Uh, that was pretty crazy. We're, we're, we move then to a, uh, from, from a, a, a female lion chasing Steve-O out of the uh, safari area to a female warthog chasing Pontius out of, uh, out of a pen. Warthog. Again, he flies over the fence. Whenever he gets in pens, bad things happen to him and he has to make an a drastic exit. The animals do not 100%. like him. Eh? No, they don't. Animals hate him, and uh, and especially uh, this warthog. It's crazy because warthogs, 
you hear so much shit about them and then you see them and you're like, there's no way that thing can hurt me. I think it would be kind of like hippos, like their 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 shape belies how dangerous they actually are. But apparently warthogs are fucking vicious, just like hippos are the leading cause of death of any mammal in in, in Africa, which is which is pretty intense. Um, but I, I think warthogs are adorable and I, I hated the fact that they called them ugly. Uh, Pontius saying he slept with worse, <laughs> which was kind of a nice one. <laughs> then we get to a, a helicopter ride and they've never been in you one. Know, you know what sucks? They should have done a black mamba intro before this before the the helicopter ride yeah why is that oh Kobe. my god chris <laughs> no <laughs> oh my god <laughs> i can't believe i asked i can't believe i had to ask immediately as i said it i knew Fucking i'm surprised hell. you included that uh faster uh well done well done uh that is uh yeah i'm gonna be i'm gonna lose sleep over that one i think um <laughs> Unlike Kobe Bryant, these guys have never been in a helicopter uh, uh, and they do some (laughs) stunt flying, which is uh, kind of terrifying, but also looks insanely exciting. I had in my notes, uh, this looks super exciting. And then they go up over a mountain and then basically nosedive down. And I was like, yeah, fuck that. I don't want to do that. It just I don't understand how helicopters can be agile. So seeing it like that, I'm like, it's basically a degree away from killing everybody and that that scares me remember when we we took a helicopter i think from vegas to the grand canyon and remember the guy was going like with the blades like a couple feet away from the rocks yeah like the side of the wall it was so scary well no but that's the thing he it looked because the grand canyon is all about perspective it looked like he was a couple feet away and then we're like how close are we he's like yeah we're probably like like 80 feet away 100 feet away oh really oh yeah it was it was no it was Dude. like it was like 200 feet but it just looked so close <laughs> do you remember that like the guys like don't mess around with the radios like we all had like headsets <laughs> on and he's like and he's like whatever you do he's like you know the radio's for serious talk and like try not to use it it's distracting da-da-da. and i wait till everyone was silent and i just like buzz on the radio i'm like <laughs> Mikey's gay <laughs> or some shit like that. I just dissed you or just said some fucking comment. That's you know, exactly like what you said. Old. You said attention, oh attention, Mikey's gay. And then <laughs> and then just quiet on the radio and then you buzz back in so we can hear your laughter. <laughs> <laughs> that was oh, such man. a fucking shit, eh? Yeah, nothing's oh, changed. Man. Nothing's Mom and changed. Dad must have been so b- mortified. Yeah, absolutely. Anyway. Why? I mean, there's a lot of shit that you've did to, done to them that made them absolutely mortified. Yeah, uh, bad one. Helicopters sometimes included, sometimes not. Uh, I love there's a moment when Pontius looks over at Jeff Tremaine in the helicopter and he has a look on his face that is not a character. It's just like he looks at him like, yo, is this normal? Is this what we're supposed to be doing? He looks terrified, but not in the way that they put on looking terrified when they want to like get a good shot. He just, there's a moment in his face that he's like, Jeff, you're, you know what you're doing, right? Like, we're not going to die here, are we? Yeah. And I don't know that Jeff knew the answer to that. Um, just like if I put a suit on that made me look like a fucking zebra, I would wonder if I knew what I was doing as soon as the lions come. Chris, of of all the stunts or sketches in this one, is this not the one you remember most? This in the hammock. Oh, in, mm. in this episode or in general? In this in this episode, but this is one of the most yeah, iconic stunts in Wild Boys. It's I the can craziest think of. thing I've ever seen in my life. Like, so walk us just, through walk us through what they do. Well, they they you know the the comical like two suited horse or zebra type outfits that people have. Yes, where you know the one guy's in the back, the one guy's in the front. And they're chilling with another pack of zebras, which you think would be dangerous enough, man. People don't realize how big zebras are. Yeah. They're intimidating. They're animals. horses. They're you know fucking I mean? horses. No, like but they're, they're like double the size of a horse. Are they really? They're, I don't think that's oh true. We, we, we saw them far away, like when right. we're on the safari. Go to the zoo. Even the, like the little ones at the zoo, man, it's unbelievable how much bigger they are than a horse. Really? It's really, it really stands out, yeah. Um, okay, horses are generally larger than zebras. Zebras range in height from about 1.2 to 1.5 meters, whereas a horse can generally grow to about 1.8 meters. That's not true. It is true. No, it's not. According to the Dallas Equestrian Center. Yeah, because they're obviously trying to beef up their freaking horses. What about horseyhooves.com? Zebras are smaller and stockier than horses. No, nah, no, nah, What about besthorserider.com? Go, go with one that's not a horse site. If I'm trying to promote my own brand, obviously they got fucking a few, you know, eggs in the basket of the horses, all right? So you're this, saying, is, this is fake news. This is bias. This is absolutely big ridiculous. horses out there trying to uh, lobby Big their horses trying to lobby versus... that they're bigger than zebras. Go, yeah. go find ze- zebralovers.com and see what they say about the fucking size of zebras. I guarantee you they're going to say they're bigger 
Fine, I've seen it with fine. my own eyes. I don't believe that shit. But anyways. Yeah, so I mean, I, I, the, the whole stunt's going all right. You know, you see them compared to the zebras, the tiny little zebras, which are clearly smaller than horses, running around. And you think that that's all it's going to be until all of a sudden they say something like, well, I hope there's no lions. And then it cuts and there are fucking lions attacking <laughs> them. That's the moment I think I fell in love with Wild Boys. Yeah, that, that's a pretty aggressive and iconic scene. Like, it's literally the exact place you don't want to be. And it's one thing, like, they're, it's like three or four of them. You can tell they're like cubs. Yeah. Like lion cubs, but they're full blown attacking them. And Which they would the be suit terrifying right off. either way. And it's, 100%. it's I wonder if they, they go straight for the, the head. Suit. They did. No, you see before they got in, they had, I mean, listen. Chris Pontius is no stranger to a padded outfit. He does it all the time. And every time he puts one on, he gets fucking annihilated. Um, if you were in this situation, would you rather be the back of the horse or the front of the horse? I mean, the, the problem about the back is I know lions, they a lot of the times jump on the back oh, to get right. to the neck. Um, and just the fact of not being able to see. Yeah. that that's, I, I think I'd rather be on the front because you could at least see and decide that you need to bail. Yeah, I, I think I think not being able to see would be petrifying, but it's when the lion goes straight for Steve-O's face and grabs the helmet. Here's the thing, like a lion doesn't understand what a costume is. And I know as much as you put stock into animals, I don't know, making stone armor for themselves and mixing their own uh, oh, it's just DNA. poisons. Genetics. It's just DNA. OK, I can't imagine that it has a single fucking clue what's going on when it rips a, a mask off of Steve-O and takes it as a surprise. Well, it was a cub. He's probably so proud. Like, look, mom, look what I got. I got a whole head. <laughs> <laughs> There's no meat in it. Bring it home to his family and not being able to provide anything, a, something that I'm sure I'll be familiar with once I have kids. Uh, and that's about it. That rounds out the episode, uh, an episode that I'm surprised you didn't like, Chris. I actually I, I enjoyed it quite a bit. I thought this was especially ending off with the zebra suit one. I mean, I'd say the episode that, worth that it definitely just for that. saved the day and the helicopter. You know, the, the, I think the back ha- I was very back loaded. The beginning was just a bunch of rapid fire. Nothing skits, but it really saved itself in the back. But. Um, hmm. Yeah, like like a two person sort uh, uh, a horse suit. Huh? That's very true. Zebra. Exactly. Zebra. A so, suit. Sorry, a smaller suit. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> well, that's about it, Chris. Uh, I loved going back to uh, South Africa with you. I'd love to do it again. I hope yep. I hope seeing that they are revisiting countries because I wasn't sure if they would. I mean, I'm assuming in the what five or six seasons of the show that they would have to go back to some places again and again. Um, it is weird, though, that they that they do. South Africa and then another episode of just Florida. It's like a city versus an entire country, but uh, hopefully we can get a little bit more specific in the later seasons, uh, but that's about it guys. Once again, thank you so much for listening. Uh, join us over on social medias at Jackass pod. You can get a hold of us. Jackass pod at gmail.com. Jay will be joining us most likely next week. We'll be back hopefully with Viva La Bam episode four, a little bit out of order, but uh, we'll catch you up on there. All good things. Say hi to Chris on our socials. Say hi to me on our socials. Uh, whoever, you prefer best let us know who you like the most because that's uh that's kind of what we're here to find out definitely me yeah no i i wouldn't put it past them to say that to be honest <laughs> I'm, I'm very used to people reaching out to me with the express purpose of telling me they they that i'm their least favorite person who's spoken into a microphone on their on their new favorite podcast uh but we will see you next week on your new favorite podcast uh bye i'm mikey aaronworth bye i'm chris aaronworth bye, I'm Jason <laughs> <laughs> and this has been jackass Press X for Sound audio production.